What's going on everybody? I'm Bruce Ulrich. Welcome back. In today's video, I'm going to show you how I made this sliding barn door with a modern twist. So if you're wondering why my intro looks a little bit different, it's because I'm basically stealing Johnny Brooks intro from Crafty Workshop. So Johnny and I did not plan this project together, but when we realized that we were both releasing sliding barn door videos at a similar time, we decided to coordinate. So I'm gonna have all of his information down in the description below. If you don't already follow Crafted Workshop and watch his videos, I definitely suggest that you go check him out. All right, let's get into the project. So I'm starting this barn door build and I just went with pine. This happens to be from a local place that all they sell is pine, cedar, and cypress. Uh, I was just calling around to check some prices to see how they were versus some of the home improvement stores and they were half as cheap and I actually was able to upgrade to this, I think they called it a C grade and if you can see how clear it is, there's no knots in any of them. So I was able to get this grade of pine from them for half the cost that I could have gotten them at the local home improvement store. If that's all you have access to, just go with it. I used my Home Right Finish Max sprayer to spray on some flat white acrylic paint on a few of the pieces. Then I stained the rest. I used two different color stains to give more depth to the overall look. I also stained the back of the door, which was just a piece of plywood. Then it was time to lay out the design. I put a few marks on the piece so that I would know where to start. So let's talk aesthetics versus what's actually practical. I wanted to ideally not have any nail holes in these boards. I wanted to just glue them down and put some weight on them. I thought that would look better aesthetically, but when you look, boards are never perfectly straight. And even though these are quite straight, they're not perfectly straight. So if I did it without nails on even this first one, look at the gap that either ends up being right there when there's no gap here, or if I close that gap, it really opens up a huge gap over here. So I just think my only option is to tack it down and make sure that it stays lined up with the line that I've drawn. So tack it down and move it and tack it and move it and tack it. That way it's gonna stay more uniform as the whole project goes on. I added glue under each of the pieces that I put down. For the first few pieces, I had those lines marked out so I would make sure to stay right on them. Then I just moved on to different sections, kind of adding as I went. For the different sections, I would turn the pieces 90 degrees and start a new section. I really wanted the white pieces to be very minimal as a highlight, so I tried to use them sparingly. I had never made a track saw type guide for my circular saw, so this was the perfect time to do that. And it worked out great. Also, be sure to use a sharp blade. For this cut, I had finally switched out the blade to a new one and it made a world of difference. Then I added a frame to the outside. I took the door outside to spray on some clear finish, but the threat of rain made me come back inside to finish putting on the other coats. Here's a hint I picked up from my friend Doug at DN Handcrafted. Use a brown paper sack like you used to take for lunch in between coats to knock down the little nibs that are left rather than sandpaper. I gave this a try and it worked really great. I'll link Doug's channel down below in the description. All of the hardware I needed was included in the kit I bought from Industrial by Design, except for the two door handles. Their instructions say to measure a certain amount to have the carriage wheel stick above the door. I cut a spacer block to accomplish this. 
Then I drilled the holes for the carriage bolts to go through. They were a little tight, so I just had to hammer them in. Be sure to use a square to get these perfectly vertical. I did the final tightening by hand with a wrench. My rail was a little too long for the spot we were putting the door, so I just cut it off with my angle grinder. Then it was time to hang the rail. As you can see here, we mounted a thin board to the wall. This does not really provide any strength, but rather it makes the door and the hardware clear the opening without hitting the trim. I had a hard time with this part. This wall has a weird configuration of where the studs were. I eventually got it totally secure though. I needed to add a board with a groove cut in the bottom so the hardware piece that secures to the floor can ride in that groove. This keeps the barn door from swinging in or out. Next, I laid out where the recessed handle needed to go on the back side of the door and cut that out with a router. My younger brother came over to help me bring the gigantic door inside and hang it on the rails. This thing is over a hundred inches tall. Yes! Hey Rebecca! Come look! Wow! All that was left was to add the handle to the front. I found one that was really large because this door could handle it. I think it kept with the theme of sleek and modern pretty well. I added it after the door had been hung because I was having a hard time picturing just how high it needed to be while the door was sitting flat in my shop. I love the way this thing turned out. The modern kind of lines and almost mosaic look to it is uh, just something that I've loved for a while. My wife and I love making functional art pieces. So that's kind of how we view this door as an art piece that's also functional. If you don't already subscribe to Crafted Workshop, what are you doing with your life? Seriously, go check him out. I'll leave his information below. Thanks again for watching. I'll see you back here real soon.